The mind is a tool, but like all tools, it requires maintenance and sharpening. And how then would you approach this task? With the body, it's very simple. Exercise, eating right, health maintenance, doctors, that sort of thing. But for the mind, it seems a little more difficult, doesn't it? How do you maintain something that, technically speaking, isn't even physically present? The mind is more than just, of course, the brain. Taking care of the brain is a physical health issue. But the mind requires a different approach for maintenance. And it could be different for other people. But, for me, one of the greatest tools in this arsenal for maintaining my own mind is meditation. A simple thing, really, yet so difficult for lots of people to do, from what I've heard, where you have to simply calm down, let go of your thoughts, all of whatever's racing around in your head and all that, just let it go, push it aside, empty your mind, let it be clear of everything, not just the random thoughts whizzing around in your head, but of all thoughts, of everything, clear, empty, void. And then work from there. You can do so many things with meditation, whether it's simply just enjoying that moment of emptiness, of relaxation from your own thoughts, or whether you take it deeper, going into your own mind from there, taking singular thoughts uncorrupted by the whizzing information in your brain and analyzing them purely by the thought's own logic itself. Because with meditation, you take everything about yourself and push it aside. You sort of... It's a very difficult thing to explain, actually. But you take yourself and push that aside and take a third-person perspective. That's one possible angle you can use meditation for. There are so many other things you could do with it, too, whether it's simply, again, just a guided thought exercise, or whether you actually go even deeper than that, where you take it to a personal level and you dredge up your subconscious through very careful and controlled guided thought exercise. You take the things that normally don't pop up in your brain and you draw them out, whether it be fears you have that you don't know about or can't face normally, or whether it just be some other fact about yourself that you're not aware of very much. Meditation can bring it all out. Using meditation, you can take your thoughts and feelings and learn to accept them for what they are. You can learn how they express themselves in you and why they express themselves the way they do. You can take all of this stuff that is you and break it down on an individual level, one at a time, understand it, accept it for what it is, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, whatever, neutral fact, doesn't matter. You can lay it out in your own mind from a third-person perspective understand it, rationalize it, do what you need to with it in order to make it a part of you, or to work against it to change it. It's a state of defragging the brain, quite simply, where you take your thoughts and reorganize them, put them in a better formation, if you will. Take the things that, oh, well, I had this thought, but it was unfinished. It allows you to finish that thought. Take it and analyze it, and then add it to your repository of information and thoughts in the correct place. You've sorted it now, you've dealt with it, and you understand it. And for people who are controlled and regulated especially, it is a time where you can experience the thoughts and feelings that you normally keep knocked down and pinned away. It's a point where, let's say you were upset by something, but for whatever reason couldn't express it right then. In that time of meditation, though, you can take those feelings out from where you've hidden them and bring them into the front, and you can experience them, but with more protection in your mind than just a raw experience. You have a sort of buffer, a stopgap. The logical part of your brain that meditation brings out, that can look at the feeling and dissect it on a rational level. You can sit there and say, well, why was I upset? What made me upset? What validity does that feeling actually have? Should I feel upset? And you can do it in a manner where, in essence, you are the third-person perspective to your own thoughts and feelings. You can sit there with that logical part of your brain brought forth by meditation, separating the emotion from the thought, 
say, well, I am upset about X. However, when I look at this rationally, unconnected from the situation, uninvested in it emotionally, I can see where I am wrong. Or maybe you can turn it around and say, well, actually, I am right to be upset. After looking at this rationally, I can see where I was wrong. But removing all that other stuff about exploring yourself, about learning who you are, all important, sure, but removing that, it is a breath of fresh air for your mind. It is a way to sit there and <sighs> deep breath for your brain. A moment of calm. Because, let's face it, most of our lives out here are pretty chaotic, involved in the day-to-day -day minutia of our events that seem so important and catch us so often unprepared and we're all worked up and involved and in it. We rarely take a moment to just think, unimpeded by all of the busyness and the pressure of our lives. We don't take enough time to simply know ourselves and to saturate in our own thoughts and feelings so that we can, well, grow and change and better ourselves. I guess a good way to look at it is meditation is, at, is pretty much like if your life were a sitcom show or something. Meditation is the events at the end where you almost get a synopsis in your moral of the story. That's where you can sort of take the events of your day, break it down, analyze it, and turn it into an easy-to-digest lesson or an example or an important piece to catalog. It's really your synopsis, if you want, for your day, your life, or a thought, an event. And at least for me, it has become a central point to keeping my rationality and sanity in a crazy, crazy world. Just something to think about.